So it goes without saying that if you're freezing eggs for the future, they have to be kept somewhere. Um, there are some centers that uh, will freeze your eggs, um, and then, but they don't do IVF. So those eggs have to be shipped to other sites for the IVF uh, to be done in the future. CHR has been around for almost 40 years. Uh, we have a good track record of being here and open for business, and we anticipate being open for business for a long time to come. Uh, eggs that we produce here are stored here, um, and uh, they wouldn't have to be moved somewhere else. When you're ready to do your IVF cycle, we just go back to the freezer, take them out, and, and move on. Um, we uh, are going to babysit your eggs very well and uh, make sure they're here for you uh, when you come back. Uh, one of the problems with uh, uh, storage of eggs and embryos is uh, maintaining quality control, make sure the freezer is stocked with its liquid nitrogen, make sure that uh, um, somebody's checking on that on a regular basis. We have all those policies in place and monitoring equipment so that uh, your eggs will be properly protected and uh, we'll be here when you want them when you come back. So you might ask, what are the alternatives to freezing eggs? Um, and I guess what we're really saying when we ask that question, what's the alternative to preserving my chance of having a pregnancy in the future uh, to uh, uh, freezing eggs? And one obvious one is not to wait too long and, and become pregnant on your own. Um, but of course, what else can you do to freeze and, and, and hold forward. Um, well, an egg is kind of like um, a unproven package of yeast. When you make bread, you tear open the yeast, and before you waste it on all your good um, bread-making ingredients, you proof it. You make sure it's bubbling and, and that the yeast is active. Well, your eggs, when you freeze them, have not yet been proofed. Um, so the alternative to uh, just freezing the eggs would be to turn those eggs into embryos. Um, among the, say, 20 eggs that you have, uh, uh, a certain number, um, if they get inseminated, won't fertilize. A certain number that uh, fertilize won't cleave and grow. Um, so the farther you've taken that in the process, the more confidence you can have that when you come back to them, you'll have an embryo that you can use. Uh, on the average, um, 20 eggs might end up being uh, maybe 10, 12 embryos. Um, so um, you'd have a better sense of where you stand if they were embryos that you were freezing. In the past, when uh, egg freezing wasn't as good as it is now, um, embryos uh, had a better chance of surviving the thaw. And that's probably still true to some extent, although the egg freezing has improved very much. The reason is that an embryo has several cells, um, sometimes many, many cells. And um, you can think of it instead of as a big balloon, um, like bubble wrap. So if you pop one or two little bubbles of the bubble wrap, all the other bubbles are still there. Whereas if you pop um, a balloon, the balloon is gone. So. Embryos have a little bit more redundancy um, and um, a better chance for surviving a thaw than an egg. Although, as I said, with modern freezing techniques, that's not much of a difference. Now, the problem with freezing an embryo is that uh, you may not know who you want to fertilize your egg. And if you have nobody in the picture, um, if you don't already have a life partner that you know you want to have children with, uh, it would mean choosing a sperm donor, um, and uh, that may not be the way that you plan to have your family. Um, so, uh, but one alternative that people have used is, is to create embryos and freeze embryos instead of freezing eggs.